welcome to the Caron family. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the Caron family diaries. Uh, my name is Kathleen. Um, I am mama to two little babies, and this is my birth and delivery story for baby number two. If you haven't already watched it, I just filmed um, my pregnancy story for baby number two um, so I'll link that somewhere and I also have my pregnancy story and my labour de and delivery story for baby number one I'll link that somewhere too. <laughs> so where I left off the last video I had had a stretch and sweep at four days or three days overdue um, I had a stretch and sweep um, which I asked for um, and that was at two o'clock in the day. Um, my husband had come, came with me and he actually asked for it for me. <laughs> that was at two o'clock, about two o'clock in the day and we came home um, that evening. And that evening I started to feel like, cause I had been having contractions for like a couple of weeks before this. I just think my body just moves along. I think it takes a stretch and sweep for things to actually get going for me with my first, um, labor I had a stretch and sweep and 24 hours later I was in labor um with this one so I got the it was really 12 hours I think um that evening we were sitting I was on the exercise ball and I was like yeah things are starting to happen I could feel the contractions finally starting to pick up more momentum than they had been um so I went to bed I was getting contractions I'd say from about 11 o'clock when I went to bed, I was getting them like every 20 minutes or so. I was sleeping through, the, like I was sleeping in. They would kind of wake me up, but I was sleeping in between them. Um, like I was waking up going, ooh, that's, that's a nice, <laughs> that's a nice one. And then I would drift off to sleep again. I was like, just get as much sleep as you possibly can <laughs> because it's happening. Um, then at one o'clock in the morning, like before, just a little before one, Eddie Oak started crying and I was awake anyway. I was in the middle of a contraction and they were getting much more intense. They were f pretty full on, but they were still 10 minutes apart. I was um, still dozing in between them, but I was like, yeah, it's gathering momentum. So I was, I waited for that contraction to finish and I was um, timing it on an app. I can't remember what app it is. I will look at my phone cause it's probably still there and I'll link it in the description. Um, but yeah, Eddie, so Eddie Oak started crying. He had woken in the night um, and I was awake anyway. So, and my husband was sleeping through it and my mum was in the room beside him. But I just ran up quickly and grabbed him out of the, the cot. I tried to settle him and he wouldn't settle. So I just, at that time he was doing this quite regularly, waking up and you would sit in the rocking chair with him for a minute, he'd fall back asleep. He just wanted to cuddle and then go back. He'd do that like maybe once a night. It wasn't like all the time. So I had got him and I don't know if he was, no, he wasn't up in snow having a bottle all the time. Yeah, so I got him and I was thinking, I've got 10 minutes before the next contraction. He'll def, I'll put him down. It'd be no, no problem. But so my contraction ended. I ran into the room, grabbed him out of the car and sat in the rocking chair with him. And in the time that that took, like 30 seconds, another one started and I was rocking him and rocking him and trying to get through it. I breathed through it and it stopped and, and then he was still awake, still kind of crying and then another one started. So it, it, it was like they just weren't stopping. So it went from 10 minutes apart to just being like bam, bam, bam. So I put him down, he was still crying and I, I just closed the door and I held on to the banister in on, at the top of the stairs and I was just breathing through them and my husband got up. <laughs> he had obviously woke up with the sound of Eddie Oak but knew that I was taking care of him. And he walked up and went to the toilet, walked past me and then he walked past me again and went into the bedroom and I couldn't talk because I was in the middle of a pretty intense contraction. And then he, he came back out, just stuck his head out the door and he was like, are you okay? And I was like, no, I'm in labour. <laughs> He was like, oh Jesus, all right, okay. So he woke, my, well, I think my mum heard all this happen and she got up and she went and dealt with Eddie Oak and I went into the bedroom and I remember just 
put my head down on the bed and grab the, the, the bed clothes and just squeeze them and be like, oh, they were getting really, really bad. So Eddie was like, what do you want to do? I was like, ring the hospital, tell them like, we're, we're coming. They were two minutes apart then. Um, so they had gone from 10 minutes apart to two minutes apart, just like that. Um, and they were intense. And on the way to the hospital, I thought, oh, I'm going to have this baby in the car. <laughs> I don't want to be on the news. This woman on her way to the hospital in Sydney just pops out her belly. Um, so I didn't, thankfully. I got to the hospital at about, we got to the hospital between all this happening, I think it was 3.30. Um, and when I got there, they checked me in, they checked me and I was, oh, she didn't check me straight away. I don't think, no, she didn't. She didn't check, oh, did she? Yeah, she checked me straight away and she said, you are, she's like, whoa, you're, yeah, that's right. She checked me straight away and she was like, whoa, you're eight centimeters early. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. I thought this was happening pretty quickly. Um, so I stripped down and got into the shower and I was just laboring in the shower for like an hour and a half, I think. Um, I mean, I was probably fully dilated before I went to the bed to push, but I was just, I didn't feel that urge to push yet. I was just getting through the contractions. I was in all sorts of, poor Eddie got so, he didn't even get a chance to change into his bathers. He just was there soaked in his clothes, uh, freezing. Um, hold on to me. So wh when I got into the bed, then he quickly got changed and I think he did anyway. I can't really remember. I had gas and air. I had gas in air while I was in the shower as well. Um, and I was like, I want an epidural. And they were like, I don't think you're going to have time. And I was like, I think you're lying to me. I want the epidural. And she's like, no, honestly, I've asked for it. I don't think it's going to get here in time. And it didn't. And I didn't need it. Um, I'm glad that I didn't get it because she said to me, like, she's like, I was going through one of them and I was just like, oh man, <laughs> that's intense. And she's like, this is, this is as bad as it's going to get, you know, you know that, like this is, it's not going to get any worse. And that actually helped me a lot. So yeah, I started pushing and I think I was pushing for about half an hour, which isn't bad. Like my babies both had big heads. So you know, they weren't, they were never going to just pop out. <laughs> but um, yeah, half an hour, I think it was, she was born at six o'clock in the morning. Um, so yeah, she was just perfect. Um, I had a little bit of tearing. Again, it was just like along the old scar tissue. Um, so I had stitches. And honestly, there was, I don't think there was any way I wasn't going to tear with these babies because their heads were huge. Um, but yeah, I did it without the epidural and I was so happy. Um, cause I know if I ever do have another baby, I don't need an epidural. Um, so yeah, the, she was born and she was just perfect. I felt great. Um, she was eight pounds, eight ounces. I said in the last video that I do was eight pounds, 11 ounces, I, I think. I think, but he's actually eight pounds, 12 ounces. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think that's what I said, but he was actually, I don't know why, where I got 11 from. Um, so yeah, she was eight pounds, eight ounces. So, and she had the lo the hugest eyes, like Eddie Oak couldn't open his eyes for like the first month. Like he, he could, he kind of look at you but it was like always an effort to open his eyes for like the first month of his life Nonin came out and I'll insert a picture of her um then and maybe now um here but she just had the most huge eyes from the beginning and she just lifted up her head and looked straight at me and looked around <laughs> the room um she's like an owl like her eyes are like saucers they're gorgeous everyone comments on them um so she, yeah, she was just very, very alert. Um, and I'll, I'll also link. Um, God, I've got so much, so many things. I should have 
taking notes. <laughs> There's so many things to link in this video, but I will link her bringing baby home from the hospital video. This is a video I made after the fact before we started doing vlogs, but it was uh, footage that we had and you'll see her like a few hours old, just eyes wide open looking around at us like she's, it was amazing. Um. So yeah, I felt great. I felt fine. I said, look, I'm, I have no interest in staying here. If everything's okay um, with both of us, I'm happy to go home whenever. Um, so they discharged us at one o'clock in the day. Now, I, in hindsight, wouldn't recommend that to anyone. <laughs> um, I was very much, I want to get home, I like, I hate being in hospital, I, I wanted to be, I wanted all the IVs out of me, everything, um, but it didn't work out too well. <laughs> I came home, I was at home at three o'clock I think, half two, three, um, my mum had made us food, we ate, I was starving, um, and then she was looking after Eddie Oak and me and Eddie and Noni went upstairs, lay down. S and they were sleeping and I think I fed Noni and then I could feel so that the contractions continue. Um, any of you mamas will know contractions continue. Um, you know, you've got up to six weeks of bleeding after you have a baby um, and your ut uterus like contracts down to its normal size again. So I was lying in the bed and I think when you when you feed your baby or if you can hear them suckling or it, something happens to your body and you, it like makes the contractions come on more. Um, so that's why like breastfeeding it, like is better for contracting your uterus down and I think I was, I tried to best breastfeed her for a little while but um, the circumstances that unfolded it didn't work out um anyway so i could feel these contractions when i was lying down in the bed and then i started to feel gushes of bleeding coming out of me and i thought oh i i think that's that's quite a lot i'm gonna have to go to the toilet or go into the shower because that's that's gonna i'm gonna bleed through um and I still, I didn't think much of it, but it, when I stood up, then I felt like something drop into my underwear. This is, this is totally TMI, but this is what happened. And I want to tell this story just so people, anyone on babies, you know, this can happen and what to watch out for and never second guess yourself. Um, and I was like, okay, that's not normal. So I went into the shower because I was a mess then. Um, I just went in in my, sh in my clothes, stripped off, ran the shower, and I, what had come out was, I didn't know, I, I knew at the time I recognized there was a piece of placenta, but there was also a, this other big, large blob, like a clot. Um, so that was like a, a huge, like a huge clot. Um, there was a few of them, and there was a piece, pieces of placenta, big, like big enough piece of placenta. Um, and I was just bleeding profusely and there was more clots coming out of me. Um, and I stayed in the shower for a little bit, you know, to try and let the bleeding stop so I could get out, but the bleeding just wasn't stopping. And I was like, I can't stay in the shower. I'm going to like bleed to death if I don't get out. Um, so then I went from the shower into the bathroom to the toilet. Um, I sat on the toilet and called Eddie. I just called him because he was still asleep and I was like, and he seemed there, there was blood everywhere. And I was like, get mummy, <laughs> get my mummy. Something's not right. Um, and I called her up and she looked in the shower and looked to see me and she's like, no, we need, we need to call the, we need to call the hospital right now. And it's funny because me and Eddie are very like, everything's always okay. Everything's fine. Um, and we, had she not been there, we might not have been as quick to call the hospital. Um, but in the time it took the ambulance to get there, and I was still, still leading, um, they, so I spoke to the, the hospital, they explained what ha was happening, um, they sent an ambulance out, they did some tests on me up in the bedroom, then they carried me outside. Uh, it was, this was, 
I know it was not a funny situation, but like bearing in mind, I had just had a baby, you know, I was pretty, still pretty heavy. <laughs> they carried me down the stairs in this stupid chair thing. And the young guy behind me was like, with every step they went down, he was going, oh. <laughs> the sweat was dripping off him. I felt like saying, for God's sake, put me down and let my husband just carry me down the stairs. But you know, I was, I was going to sit up. Eddie said afterwards, he was like wetting himself laughing. Um, it's a good job I'm not sensitive. <laughs> but it was really funny. But I was just like, God's sake, just put, can my husband just carry me down? This is a big rig. He literally had me down the stairs in 10 seconds. Um, but anyway. They struggled on and <laughs> got me down the stairs. Um, so yeah, got into the ambulance and they were like, Eddie, you can, Eddie was like, I'll get the bag ready with no need and we'll come and follow you in. And so the more tests he was doing on me in the ambulance, just as we were leaving our little residential area, he was saying, okay, I don't want to alarm you and it's just because traffic's really bad and we just would rather get you there sooner rather than later. We're going to put the sirens on, but don't panic. You know, we don't want your heart rate or anything. And I was like, okay. <laughs> um, and he put like, we put the, the sirens on and we were literally like, we we're a good 20 minute drive from the hospital that's without traffic this was rush hour traffic and we got there so I don't know how long it took them but we got there so fast and it I'm not gonna lie it did worry me and as I said I am one of these people that's like everything's okay I'm going I'm going to the hospital now it's fine but I could feel like more gushes coming out and I could feel like my heart it felt like my heart was under pressure and I didn't and he was doing more tests to me and he was ringing the hospital and he was on the phone to them telling them what was happening and so they were ready and he asked me things like um have you ever been told that one pupil dilates differently to the other um I was like, no he said have you ever been told that you have an irregular heart rate and I said no but all these questions oh he another one he asked me is there has there been any um sudden young adult death syndrome you know that I don't know if I'm saying that right. In your family? And I said, no. Um, but all these questions, even though he was telling me, please don't worry, this, these are just precautions, it was starting to make me feel like, because I just felt like, oh, I've just had my baby, like, am I going to get to see her properly? I, oh, it was just, it was, and I'm not one to panic in these situations or feel like, but I could feel the physical effect what was happening to my body I could feel that it was going downhill really really fast um and I think I just got to the hospital in time he said as we were pulling up to the hospital he's like I want you to stay calm I want you to just focus on one thing there's going to be you're going into the emergency and there's going to be about 20 or 25 people around you doing different things they're all just making sure that we do everything right and that it's you he's like you're going to be fine he's like but just try not to worry try not to panic um and it was really scary they brought me in and they um there was people running around like there was a few doctors there was lots of nurses there was just people everywhere people putting things into things on my chest people putting IVs in each arm um they put um a Foley's catheter in I think I went they first did um some sort of massage thing to get everything out of me um they cut off my clothes um and the doctor said I I'm just letting you know that we're preparing you for surgery we're going to try and stab stabilize you here but we may have to rush you in for surgery, emergency surgery, and um, and they also put me hooked me up to um, a blood transfusion because I had always already lost um, quite a lot of blood. Um, they gave me two units of blood, but we were calculating it afterwards, and I definitely lost more than two units of blood. Um, so, but that's what they gave me, um, and they managed. To stabilize me but I remember I was I was lying there and I didn't even notice that there was like just because I, I could see all the monitors I could see what was happening 
and I was just being quiet and I was just like letting them do their thing, um, answering their questions and letting them do their thing. But I felt like, oh my God, you he you do hear about this happening. Um, and I I just thought, oh, my baby's at home. And it was, it was awful, it was so scary. Um, but yeah, I didn't even realize that I had been crying. <laughs> there was tears just like running down my face and this um, student nurse came over and she just like let everyone else do whatever they were doing and she came over and she just held my hand and she's like, I'm so sorry this is happening to you. She's like, it's gonna be okay. Um, and that was so, because you know, I was still, <laughs> I was still there by myself and, but yeah, they did a great job. They got me stabilized. Um, they managed to, the bleeding did eventually stop the next day like I, the clotting stopped um so what had happened was there was placenta left in and it was holding my uterus open and the wound was like still bleeding so it was all clotting and um by the time eddie got there they had me stabilized um and yeah it, they moved me to the ward then um back to the labour ward actually I stayed there for a few hours and then they moved me just to the maternity ward um and I was hooked up to all these <laughs> machines and drips and they said um they were like oh you can keep your baby with you if you want but your husband can't stay and I was like how am I going to look after my baby I can't move if I move at all the alarms start going off because it says the IV is not in right and I couldn't and I was at this stage you know I had been awake I had af been after having a baby that morning and gone through all this and I was like I'm not going to be able to look after her by myself so she went home with Eddie for her first night um, and that was really sad that I couldn't spend her first night in the world um, with her but I knew like she had a more than capable father looking after her and my mum was here as backup as well so um, yeah, so that was pretty sad, but I'm just glad that everyone was safe and everyone came out of it okay. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so that was my little dramatic, great labour, like it just all went so smoothly, but the after effects. So yeah, I wouldn't be rushing out of the hospital again, I wouldn't advise it. Um, you know, it was what I wanted, I wanted to be at home, but, and I know this is probably a slim chance of that happening to anyone, but it just... As I said, I feel, I felt like at the time we just got to the hospital in time and it, had I been, just been there, it probably would have been dealt with a lot less stressfully and um, wouldn't have gotten to that stage. So yeah, <laughs> that uh, was a bit of a dramatic and emotional uh, labour and delivery story. Um, yeah, it was overall great. Um, I, I would obviously in hindsight have done things differently and um, like I wouldn't have rushed out of the hospital but no one even was here she was healthy that was the main thing and they looked after me fantastically um given the circumstances um so yeah that was my labor and delivery story um I will link as I said all those other videos um I hope I haven't scared anyone <laughs> um yeah, it was, as I said, she was the best little surprise we ever got. And because my pregnancy, although my pregnancy with Noreen was much better than my pregnancy with Edio, because I was looking after a small baby and it was still a bad pregnancy, um, I struggled a lot. Once she came then, it was just like much easier. It felt much easier. Life was still very hard but it felt much easier compared to what we had been doing. Um, and they are the best of friends now, 14 months to the day apart and they just have the best crack together and the best fun. So yeah, if you would like to see more of them or if you haven't seen them, um, check out our channel, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Hi!